MVP, and I will be your host today. And today we're talking about uh, how to um, migrate your InfoPath data into SharePoint lists. Uh, just a few points ahead of time. Um, this webinar requires audio. Um, if uh, and uh, if you can hear this, uh, then I imagine you have audio. But uh, we do make these webinars available on YouTube afterwards, so um, you can always uh, watch them again after the afterwards. So we're going to start off with a short presentation about uh, migrating XML data into lists, um, and then followed by a demo, and we will have a Q&A session after that. And feel free to start posting your questions as you come up with them, uh, and we will um, answer them in the order we receive them. So uh, first of all, a topic that has been on a lot of people's minds lately, especially ours, is that Microsoft has uh, deprecated InfoPath. They announced this on uh, January 31st, which is about uh, two weeks ago now. Um, Jimmy, are you, uh, sorry, this is Patrick. Are you sharing uh, your slides? I still see the first slide. Yes, I am. Just want to make sure that <laughs> you're, you're uh, talking to the right slide there. Sorry about that. Okay. Let's see. How is it looking now? I uh, still see the first slide. Hmm. Okay, we're having some technical difficulty. I can, hear you. I can hear you fine. <laughs> um, Let me stop sharing for a moment. I will start sharing again. Great. Thanks. All right, uh, any luck now? Yeah, it looks good, thanks. Okay, all right, um, sorry about that everybody. Um, so as I was saying, Microsoft has deprecated InfoPath and we're all thinking about um, what to do next. Um, so I, I'm sure a lot of people are, you, are also uh, thinking the same thing as us. Well, I want you to know that we are here to help. Um, we are as dedicated as ever to bringing you great e-form solutions. InfoPath is not the be-all and end-all of in electronic forms, and um, we're help to here to help guide you in um, your future electronic form work and help you maintain your existing solutions. But as far as right now goes, um, if for those of you who haven't read uh, Microsoft's official announcement of InfoPath deprecation, they recommend that you uh, continue to use InfoPath technology in the meantime. Uh, as with all Microsoft products, Microsoft will be supporting InfoPath for um, the next 10 years. That means until uh, 2023, I believe, maybe 2024. Um, so InfoPath is going to be around for a long time. So what we're talking about here today is uh, is the future. Maybe the end of this year, maybe maybe a couple of years from now. But um, what are you going to do um, when you need to start moving away from InfoPath? Um, and for those of you who didn't catch last week's webinar, we had a, another webinar about um, about uh, the world after InfoPath presented by Jen. And um, I certainly recommend checking that out if you haven't seen it yet. So today's topic is how to migrate your existing InfoPath XML into SharePoint lists. So um, let's say you've collected a lot of data and a lot of InfoPath forms. Um, SharePoint and InfoPath uh, work together great to allow you to collect data. But um, you want to be able to access 
um, that data as lists. Um, lists, as we all know, are at the heart of SharePoint, and sometimes it's um, it's nicer to it's nice to have the data in lists and be able to access them there. If you've been using uh, queue rules, you may have been um, already um, storing your your form data into SharePoint lists, and that's great. But um, I imagine there are a lot of cases where that's uh, not the case, and that's what we're talking about today. So let's say you've accumulated a lot of data in XML forms by using InfoPath. Now you want to uh, access uh, that data using SharePoint lists. You'll need a way to migrate it into lists. Luckily, we have a way. So um, the InfoPath the SharePoint list tool that we have uh, included with uh, QRules, um, some of you may not know this, but it actually provides a way to import uh, import data into uh, SharePoint lists just using the tool. Um, many of you have already worked with this tool um, and using it with QRules and uh, are probably familiar with its uh, built-in, with its uh, functionality. And, uh, but it also has this uh, bulk migration uh, functionality. And we've also been doing a lot of work on the, the tool recently to uh, spruce it up a bit and um, sort of make it uh, more uh, usable with uh, hierarchical data. So um, the first step is to um, open up the tool. You can attach uh, the, the XSN template that the, uh, the data uh, came from, or, or the template was used to, to produce the data. Um, then you enter in the, the URL of the site to query um, what kind of lists are available on the site. And you can go about uh, setting up mappings to those lists. Um, once you've done that, you go over to the import forms view in the same form. Uh, enter the um, uh, folder where you have a bunch of um, XML files. You will need to have copied these off of the SharePoint site. You hit import, and then it just imports them in for you. So let's have a look at how that works. So. Just need a minute for the tool to open up. Um, as some of you already know or, or will notice, this, this tool is uh, actually built using InfoPath. So um, you'll need to have InfoPath uh, installed to use it. Just copy this URL. Uh, Jimmy Patrick here. <laughs> Usually these things take a couple seconds. What, what's with the minute on this one? Um, yes, it, it, it usually does load very fast. I think um, just ha experiencing a little slowness on my machine at the moment. But the, yes, um, typically the tool should open up right away. Okay, um, so here we are. So we're going to attach uh, the, the XSN. So I've prepared in advance a, um, our stock uh, expense report form. in the site URL. Well, 
All right, so I've attached the form that was used to produce uh, those XML files in the first place. I've entered the URL of the SharePoint site where I want um, to store that data in lists. Okay, let me just hop over here for a sec. Um, so this is the site. Um, so I actually have a form library on this site where I have the forms stored. Um, that's not a necessary condition. I just wanted to have it all in one place for this demo. But um, so we can see we have all these expense reports here. And I want to get this data into these lists. So I have these lists over here. which, as we can see, are empty at the moment. Okay, so I'll go set about um, adding mappings to these lists. So the top level list is the expense report list, so I'll just select that here. Um, so I want to map, map my form fields to the list. So you can see I click this dot, dot, dot button, and that opens up a nice uh, tree over here. that has all the information. So let's say I'll map employee name to the employee name column. Um, I'll map another field. Let's say um, map email address to the employee email. Now I want to add a um, another list mapping a level below that. Ordinary, I would go through all the columns, but uh, I will um, save you for, um, I will skip that for this demo. Uh, but to show you how this works, um, so I want to add item, which is a child list of the expense report. So this maps to uh, the items, actually the item singular group in the form, so I enter that here, um, and then I can go about adding the values for that. Now a new feature that we've um, actually added this week is the ability to indicate a column that's uh, a parent list ID. So what happens is it goes through this mapping from the top down, um, and as it's as it's going downward, it keeps track of the parent ID. So when I when it stores a, an item in expense report, it'll keep track of that ID. And then we can put that ID into the child list so that we have a reference upward to the to the parent list, which will be important for maintaining maintaining those uh, relationships. Okay, and uh, this will allow you to go as deep as you want. So the items. Um, in this particular expense report, actually have data further down. They've got gifts. So I can map those gift values. Whoops, I forgot to select a list. There we go. So we can map those list gift values um, as well. And again, we have a parent ID, and since this is below expense report item, um, this parent ID is going to re refer to the items that are added to expense report item. So we've got this uh, nice hierarchical relationship that's maintained by the tool. Okay, so as I said, I'm not going to go through uh, the whole mapping here during this demo, but I have prepared one in advance. So I'll load that in. As I'm sure some of you know, um, the, the tool provides the ability to save and load mappings, which is uh, which will be very handy if you need to um, do this process a couple times or um, split up your work across a couple sessions. 
So here I've loaded in the mapping. Uh, we can see it's the same hierarchy except um, we've got the entertainment list here, which is also a child of expense report item. Um, and whoops. And uh, in gift, um, I've added a little bit of fancy XPath here so that it doesn't match um, items that have a blank recipient name. Um, and that have and whose gift amount is blank or zero. And similarly for um, entertainment, I'm not mapping uh, entertainment rows where the person name is blank because that'll that'll often uh, mean that uh, it was just a blank row that was pre-populated in the form and not something that had actual data in it. Okay, so I've got my la mapping loaded up in the tool. I'm ready to go over here, and I will let's see. Copy this in here. The tool provides a browse button to allow you to select the uh, folder, but sometimes it's uh, it's faster just to paste, copy and paste the value over from Windows Explorer. All right, so I'm ready to go. It tells me which list I'm going to be mapping to. I'll hit import. Give it a couple seconds, and then it's done. So this was just four documents, so it finished pretty quickly. All right, so I can go back over these lists. We can see that in expense report, I now have four list items, one for each document. In expense report item, I should have items, and the, the items are I have a one-to-many relationship with the expense reports. So I'll have more than four of those, which we do. Um, as we can see, it's maintained a parent ID reference. Um, it's showing names because this is a lookup column. But if I actually click on it, it will take me to the item for that actual expense report. Yeah. So. Jimmy, we had okay. one question and, uh, here. Similarly with gifts. Yep. Sorry to interrupt, Jimmy. We have one question here about the lookup, uh, whether you can make the column a lookup after you import it um, on the parent. So could, you can could click on it and, and you know jump to the parent. Is that possible? Um, I don't believe so. I believe in order for a, you can't change a non-lookup column to a lookup column. It would have to be that way from the beginning. So you'd want to have that configured. Uh, beforehand, but um, but as long as you have um, made sure to make it a lookup column, which I would recommend doing um, in the case of parent IDs, what you can do is um, let's see. What you can do is change the value that's actually displayed. So let's say I didn't want to show employee name. I actually wanted to show report date for this lookup column. So I can just go into the column properties and change that. And if I go back to expense report item, And now it's showing the report dates for the associated um, expense reports. It looks like I had same dates for all of them. Um, yeah, but uh, under the covers, uh, this column is actually storing a numerical ID for the uh, for the parent item. So it allows you to to change a couple settings on it and show different stuff, as long as um, up as a lookup column in advance. I'll just show you this last list, which is expense report entertainment, and um, and here here again we have the parent ID, which which is here referring to an expense report item. So in that case, you're actually getting redirected to the parent. Is that right? Yeah. So this is a reference to um, 
items from expense report items. So when I click one of these, it's showing me the list item from that list, from the expense report item list, which has a title, a cost, a date, etc. That's cool. Okay. So um, definitely a very handy tool if you um, want to migrate um, your data into SharePoint lists. Um, and, um, and certainly if you want to um, modify your existing InfoPath forms to, uh, to submit data to lists um, directly from the forms, it also provides uh, that functionality. And we certainly recommend getting the, uh, the latest version that has this um, added uh, hierarchy support, especially for the uh, import feature. Uh, so okay. Jimmy, Jimmy, um, Jimmy, to get the latest version, since on that note, I just wanted to let people know that we are uh, providing a free version of QRules out there as a trial, and it's on our website. Uh, for those of you who have QRules, um, just send us an email. Uh, we will be posting the free version out there probably uh, either later today or tomorrow or maybe even Monday. Um, we'll do a, some quick testing on it, but um, we should have the, the new version out. Yep. Thank you, Patrick. Okay, uh, so once you've got your data into lists, you're, you're going to want to access that data. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have experience working with lists in SharePoint. Probably um, several, many of you have uh, more experience than I do. Um, but um, a few things uh, to think about um, what if you want to access this hierarchical data. Uh, Microsoft Access um, provides the ability to um, actually sync your SharePoint lists onto your, um, onto your computer and, um, and access them from Access and then sync them back. Um, there are also uh, web part mashups. Um, a, a pretty good one we've seen is um, from the, um, the SharePoint Hillbilly blog. Um, I've added the link here and we're going to be uh, providing this uh, slide deck with the, um, with the webinar material. So um, certainly check that out. I can uh, give you a quick um, view of what that looks like. Let's see. All right. Um, so this is, um, this is using the Northwind um, database and not, not our expense report um, scenario. But um, a while back, um, Hillary Stupa set up, um, she went through the tutorial and set this up. So what we have here, and this is on uh, SharePoint 2010, but I believe it should work uh, just as well on 2013. Um, so what we have here is our typical um, SharePoint item list view, except it's uh, been modified to show the child items. And in addition, we get this, uh, we have this little add new item link. And if we click that, it opens up a new item window uh, with the with the order number pre-populated, so 2249. And let's open up uh, this one. We've got a little funkiness here with uh, some white space at the top. But I'm sure it's uh, something easy to fix. Yep, here again, the order lookup has been pre-populated with 10, uh, 2, 5, 1. So, um, so definitely something to check out if you want to, um, if you want to set up a sort of interface right on SharePoint to, um, to access and uh, interact with your hierarchical data. Okay, um, so that's it for our webinar today. Uh, I just want to tell you about our new FormsQuo website that we've uh, set up, FormsQuo.com, um, which provides um, resources for um, eForms. Currently, um, we have materials on InfoPath, but we will be expanding that to uh, encompass uh, electronic forms of all, all kinds. So um, certainly come and check out uh, what we have um, to offer and um, get your hands on some great materials. Yeah, and I just want to mention too, uh, this is Patrick, uh, that uh, we will be updating the site in the next two weeks uh, for the SharePoint conference. We have a, a matrix going up there comparing uh, all the form technologies that, that are out there, well, the top ten, 
and we'll be talking about uh, uh, Nintex and K2 forms and uh, other technologies like PDF share forms in the weeks ahead. Uh, and really our goal here is to provide um, some analysis and some pros and cons and so that you can make a decision about uh, what technologies to look at moving forward. Once again, we don't need to worry too much about this in the next year, but we want to start that planning process so that when you are ready to move, uh, you have a good foundation uh, and you can create a, a good, uh, um, you know, um, an, I guess a, a good conclusion or a good, uh, um, what's the word I want to use, uh, uh, rationale for, for moving to that new technology. So we have some questions, Jimmy. Um, and uh, let's see, I think I, I was answering a few of them before while you were doing the demo. Um, we've got another question here, uh, not really following the training right now. Uh, we'll like to go through later. Can you send me the link? Yeah. So Emmanuel, uh, thanks for the, the question, the comment. Um, we uh, uh, will be providing uh, links to everyone who fills out the survey at the end. Uh, so we get the free package for the webinar if you uh, go in, fill out the survey that you're presented with at the end of the w webinar. Uh, and uh, we'll also be making this new version of the conversion tool available as part of the QRules trial on our website, but it, it may take a day or two for that. Well, let's see. Jimmy, do you want to answer the question from Michael? Is the parent ID feature also available for InfoPath 2010? Sure. Um, yes, uh, it's, it's uh, entirely uh, InfoPath 2010 compatible. I believe it may even be compatible with um, InfoPath uh, 2007. Um, and the SharePoint lists have had the ability to have uh, lookup columns. Um, I, I know it's definitely in 2010 and probably in earlier versions as well. So yes, even with um, SharePoint 2010 and InfoPath 2010, you should be uh, fine with that, that feature. Great. If anyone else has any questions, uh, we are here to answer a few more. And I uh, want to thank you all for joining us today. And thanks to Jimmy for that fantastic demo uh, and presentation. Um, and it uh, looks like we're, we're out of questions. So uh, I think uh, we'll wrap it up here. But I want to thank everyone again for uh, for joining us and uh, we look forward to uh, presenting to you next week. We uh, will be presenting uh, one of the other topics in the in the sort of after InfoPath series and uh, I believe uh, it's going to be Thursday at 8 a.m. So hope to have you back here next week. Thank you very much for joining us. Thanks everybody. <laughs>